it's no fun when our kids are sick, but we may just have found the silver lining. Apple and raspberry and orange flavoured electrolyte slushies made by Rehydrate. Rehydrate slushies are a tasty way to get essential electrolytes into our little ones when they're dehydrated from sickness or even just the Aussie heat. They're delicious and they'll help your little ones feel better in no time. Grab Rehydrate from Coles today. It's Happy Families Podcast with Dr. Justin Coulson. We're Luke and Susie, parents of three little boys, and this is the podcast for those of us who are time-poor parents who just want answers now. Our next guest is a doctor of psychology who writes for the New York Times and is featured in Sydney's Daily Telegraph, The Project, The Today Show, and of course, The Luke and Susie Radio Show, a closet middle-aged man in Lycra and our family and parenting expert from happyfamilies.com.au. Please welcome father of six daughters, Dr. Justin Coulson. And one son-in-law. <laughs> well, that's right, yes. Your I, first son. I've Woo-hoo. sent one of my children out of the home already and I'm feeling uh, like, well, there's more space. <laughs> In any number room. of ways, yeah. even psychologically. Oh, wow. Mm. That's huge. Okay, we'll, we'll get to Craig's question shortly, but you owe us a dad joke. Well, I, I do. Um, I hope that you won't mind this one. Okay. Uh, it, it made me laugh a lot when I heard it. I used to date a girl who loved to be covered in cheese. She was a cracker. <laughs> Justin, goodness Just, me. All right. I love your face. <laughs> Look, you didn't you didn't say anything about that one. No. no. I I love I love dad jokes and then they get told. Yeah. And, then, and I go, oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> that's, okay, Craig sent a question into well, the show. Well, you, say, you say Craig. I'm pretty mm. sure it's my sister and brother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> they asked this question just before they dish, dished off their then 17-year-old son to us. Yeah, when is the right time to tell your kids you're old enough to fend for yourself, you need to leave the house, especially if they're not motivated to get a job? What do you think? Well, I think we should go back a little bit. Now, obviously, for Craig, it might be too late. But for those who don't have children who are quite there, let's start there and then we'll move to Craig, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay, so, totally. so I think that you start young. You want to have all of the hard conversations with your children about um, intimacy, about um, some of the ugly things in life, about alcohol, mm. you know, all that kind of stuff, before they're two. <laughs> about moving out before they're two. They yeah. won't understand a word that you've said, yeah. but you get practice in yeah. saying it. That's Good. You get true. You get your story straight so that when you have to deliver it, they yeah. understand. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I, think, I think that we want to start young, and, and this is what I recommend to parents. Start to teach responsibility young so that they're ready to move out at any time, mm. 7, 13, yeah. whatever it is. But, but you want to start teaching them those basics young. They need to know how to do the chores. Um, and some people are saying, oh, I try to do the chores, and the, you know, I end up in a fight with the kids or Chores never get done. We've got this chore chart that's got three stars on it, and that was in 2017, and we haven't put another star on it since. I I think we've got to do a couple of things to get those chores happening. First of all, we want to make it relational. That is, our children are usually happy to do things with us, but they don't like being told to do things on their own, especially when they're younger. So spend the time teaching them and involving yourself with it. You might say, it's going to take too long, but it'll actually speed it up. Mm. Because think about how much time you say, you spend saying, would you please go and do that for the 15th time? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then the tears and the drama. And you end up going and doing it yourself anyway because they right. haven't done it properly. Yeah. I, I think that the other thing that you want to do is make sure that um, when it comes to chores, uh, I'm going to I'm going to say that they need to be cost neutral. Okay, so no cost. pocket money for chores. Don't yeah. pay for chores. No. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that Scott Pape, the Barefoot Investor, uh, has a slightly different opinion on that. And many people have read his Barefoot Investor for Families. And he says, you know, he's got this little system for paying for chores. For, for me, uh, I just think that chores are part of being in our family. You know, you make yeah. the mess with us and you clean the mess up with us. Because there's two, there's two schools of thought. There's the, they've got to learn that this is just, no one gets paid for this. We don't do it because we get paid. It's just living a grown up sort of as you grow up this is a part of responsibility yeah. on the other hand there is a, 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 a principle to prepare them for the working life where you do some work you get paid but you can teach that one in another area of life well right? you can teach that when they're 14 and 9 yeah. months and they go and get a job yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean there are, I, I kind of do straddle the fence a little bit we, our kids have got chores to do they've got stuff that has to be done uh, but we also pay them for some of the big jobs like if I ask them to go and wash and vacuum the car for example if I've got it, well, I'm not going to do it. So if I'm going to do it, it's going to go through a car wash and I'm going to pay $15 mm. for it. So I'd rather just give the kids the $15 and let them do yeah. it. I still have to take it through the car wash sometimes, but that's another story. <laughs> um, but, but we also want to make uh, chores fun. Mm. Yeah. Because the more fun they are, the more likely the kids will be involved. Now, this is where we move from younger kids to older kids. Let's say they're now old enough for a job. 
uh, I encourage parents to get their children to pay board. All of my children pay board as soon as they've got a job. And we work it out as a percentage. So some parents have said, oh, 5%, 10%, 20%, whatever it is. But the children pay board because that's what you do when you move out. You pay rent. You've got You've got a cost of living expense. We don't need their four dollars a week mm-hmm. or their twelve dollars a week or whatever it ends up being. What we do with it though is we stick it into a little um, account that we've set up that they don't know about. I know it's um, being spoken about right now, but my kids yeah. aren't going to hear this. Um, <laughs> I hope and, they don't and, listen to our show. And and what? then when they get to when they get to a, a certain age, actually they do every now and again. They come home and say, "Dad, I heard you on the radio today." I'm like, yeah, "I've got to be careful what I yeah. say." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but but when they get to a certain age, in the case of our eldest daughter, when she got married, we sat down with her and her new husband and said, oh, by the way, here's this bank account that's now yours and here's all that money that you paid us in board. Mm. And she said, oh, I should have paid you properly, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yep. But, but what we've done is we've taught her this life lesson, so she expects it. Yeah. Uh, now, when we get to the big kids, which is really answering Craig's question, there's a couple of things that I think are really important to – to get to the uh, you know to, to to get to the guts of what he's yeah. asking. When is it the right time to tell your kids you're old enough to fend for yourself? You need to leave the house, especially if they're not motivated to get a job. So I've given advice on this topic many times over the years, but it was only in the last couple of years that my eldest got to that point, and I had the privilege, the the experience of going through that with her. Uh, she finished high school. She started university. Uh, it wasn't going well for her. She was unhappy there. It was a long commute. She wasn't interested or passionate in what she was studying at all. And and one day she came to me and said, Dad, I, I think I need to quit uni. Now, for the guy that's got the PhD and teaches people how to raise great kids, I was mm. crushed. I was like, no, oh, this can't happen to me. Um, but, but this story is illustrative of what I uh, – I got to practice what I preach. Uh, so I said to her, um, you will finish the semester and you will pass. Mm. And, and so we kind of worked through that. But by the time we ground our way to the end of semester, we'd had another couple of conversations. And I said – I think a gap year is a good idea. In fact, I've really become a fan of the gap year, not just for her, but with so many parents that I've spoken to who said it was so important for my child to grow up and have that gap year. Mm -hmm. But this is what I believe about a gap year. A few years ago, Premier Peter Beattie had this phrase that he used for young people. He said, our young people need to either be earning or learning. And so when my eldest said, so I think I'm just going to go and keep on working part-time down at the local cafe and I'm, you know, hashtag cafe life, um, <laughs> I'll work 15 hours a week and I'm just going to go to some music festivals and save up some money and do some travel. I said, no, that's not how it will work. If you want to stay living in my home, you'll be working full-time or you'll be studying full-time. You'll be earning or learning and it's full-time. Mm. And and we went back with some Fords on this for a couple of days because she was really put out. <laughs> she was like, you can't do that. And I said, actually, I can yeah. because I've raised you to have that expectation. I said, you're welcome to stay here. Uh, but, but my children have also been told, once you start paying board, please know that when you're 18, I no longer have a financial responsibility for you. And I think that every parent should say this to their kids. If you're earning, you don't need me to be financially responsible for you. If you're learning, you're welcome to stay in our home and we'll continue to provide the basics that we've been providing, but we're not going to buy your clothes. We're not going to buy your takeout. We're not going to pay for you to go to the movies with your friends or do any of your mm. extra career. We're not going to pay for that stuff. You can stay in your room and have the, the, the essentials that we're contributing anyway, but, but that's it. No more financial responsibility for you. you you're doing it on your own. And, and watching families practice what I've shared and then seeing my own daughter go through that, she went and got a job. And I've got to be honest, I, 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 I say this with the greatest of respect because I know that people do honourable work no matter what they're doing. She went and got a job that was hard work. She got a job doing uh, what you would probably call menial labour. And I say that again with, with great respect. We need people to do all kinds of jobs and I'm, mm. we're, we're grateful that they have jobs. But she went and got one of those, one of those jobs. Uh, she's been doing it for a year and a half. But now that she's had that job for a year and a half, she's excited about going back to school. She came to me recently and said, Dad, I've enrolled. I'm going back to school next year because I would like to do other things with my life other than this. I think that there are other things. I don't think we want to send our kids to to, to university. University is for adults, not children. We don't send our children to university. So so to move back to Craig's um, question, that's the conversation that you have. You pay board. You're earning or learning, or you find somewhere else to live. Plenty of your friends have got couches that you can sleep on. How comfortable is that going to be? Yeah. How much would it cost you to live elsewhere? These are your choices. And then you give them a time frame. We need a decision by the end of next week or the end of next month or by the end of the year. But once we kick off 2020 or whenever it is, yeah. that's 
that's where we're going. Okay. From my perspective, like you've got this this concept of a teenager who's not motivated to get a job, and I, how, from your experience, much have you seen that that's because they've got a poor work ethic or they're taking you for granted versus a concept of they don't know who they are and where they're going. They haven't found themselves. So, yeah, they're lacking direction and they're, therefore they're lacking motivation. Like how much is is just a, a work ethic versus that concept that they're kids that are supposed to be more grown up but they just don't haven't got themselves yet? Two responses. Number one, do the work, then find the inspiration. And number two, if you don't have a work ethic, you're not going to get it by sitting in your lounge room thinking about what you should do with your life. Go out and get a job. Go and get on with it. Start paying board. Start contributing to the world. And as my daughter has discovered, you will find out fairly soon whether you're well suited to that job or not. And if you're not, then it's time. That's where the inspiration comes. Okay, I don't want to live this life. So what life do I want to live? What changes will I make? What courses will I enroll in? What people will I meet? What networking will I do? What opportunities will I pursue? Yeah, Mm -hmm. I I just I remember when I was and I was a bit younger than probably this question is based on, but I was I was 15 when my dad he just was at the end of his tether with me, and he called me lazy. And he like, he, <laughs> what parent hasn't said that to their fifteen year old at some and, point? But though. this was this was a full on confrontation. But anybody who knows me and has known me for any period of time would use a lot of words for me. And when it comes to work and work ethic, but that's not one of them. <laughs> There's a lot of other things they can throw. Uh, it, I wasn't lazy. I just didn't like doing his work. Sure. He was a truck driver. He was a farmer. He was a manual labourer. And I, there was nothing that could kill my soul more than that, than that physical lifting and moving. And so it But Luke, was, you got creative, right? Yes. You got creative because there was an expectation that you would get on with something. Mm. And, and that's really the point here. I mean, my, dad, my dad's a furniture removalist. He runs a furniture removals company. Uh, I, I guess you'd call that you know, blue-collar work. That would be menial labour. Uh, when I put myself through university uh, as a late 20s father of three and then four and then five, I did interstate furniture removals, truck driving. Did I like it? No. Was it hard? Absolutely. But boy, oh boy, did it teach me some lessons and, and did I yeah. find the inspiration to do what I'm now doing because of that? Heck yeah. yeah so wow. if, we, if we bring our nephew back into it, our nephew contacted us and said, can I come live with you? And we, we interviewed him before <laughs> we were willing to say Yes or nay? No. And we asked a lot of questions. And one of the questions was, you know, he was lacking motivation. He was exactly what this story was. And we said, so what makes you think it'll be different here? And he said, because I know that when I'm with mum and dad, I just... There's the tension. Well, and it's, and it's, it's tense, but it's also, well, I don't have to because they're just going to... Like I know subconsciously there's this safety net, but I, I'm pretty confident that if I get out from that safety net, that I will actually be more driven to take care of myself. And it's what's happened. So glad that you said that, though. I think as parents, we've, we've got to say, I love you, but if you're here, you're earning or learning. Otherwise, you're finding somewhere else. Yeah. But if things go bad, don't ever be afraid to call me. I, I love you. I, yeah. I'm here. But, you know, get out. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or get on with <laughs> yeah. work or get on with study. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's uh, it's been a very Great valuable discussion. conversation and there's so much more we could talk about, as is always the case with Dr. Justin Corson. Thank you so much, mate, for your time. Great to be with you. To find out more info on all of Justin's books, podcasts and programs, you can go online to happyfamilies.com.au and to find out how to have Justin come and speak at your school, organisation or event, go to justincoulson.com. 